Yes. Uh, our next guest tonight works as a file clerk at a Cleveland hospital. He also writes comic books which deal with his day-to-day -day pains and pleasures. And this is an anthology of the nine of those comics. It's entitled American Splendor. From off the streets of Cleveland, folks, please say hello to Harvey P. Carr. Harvey, come out here. Hi, Harvey. You have to come around here. Good. Have a seat. Uh, what, do mean, what do you mean calling me curious, you know? I mean, I met you before the show, you know? And, uh, I meant curious yeah, yeah, in, in a know. fascinating way. Oh, all right. A man who okay, has, has, has the presence of one who is quite fascinating. Okay, because I met you before the show. I thought you were know, a pretty nice guy, you know? And then yeah, well, I think I thought, you're... Maybe, you know, you might, I might be uh, nursing a viper in my pussy. <laughs> no. you know, something like that. You're a little Get defensive that, about this, huh? Yeah, I am, man. <laughs> okay. I'm waiting for those Cleveland jokes, you know? Go ahead. All right, settle down, Harvey. Yeah, all right. Settle I'm down. down. I'm down. <laughs> Now, uh, now let's let's explain to folks who may not be familiar with your work what it is you do here exactly. You have uh, comic books about you in That's your right. daily life in Cleveland. That's right. And uh, are they embellished at all, or is it pretty much no, factual? It's, it's all true. Dude. Uh huh. All true. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? What writing comics? Yeah. Well, for about fourteen years. Mm -hmm. That's uh, you know, but I've been publishing my own stuff for about eleven. Yeah. And, and you also have a regular job in Cleveland working at a hospital. That's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Now, it, it seems to me that aiding you're... Aiding the sick, yes. Aiding the sick. Well, that's certainly noble work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you but know. it seems to me, Harvey, that uh, you have a very successful career here. This is being published by a major publishing company, Doubleday. That's right. And, and uh, why, why do you maintain the day job? To make a living. <laughs> you know? I don't make a living as a writer. Yeah. I've been writing for many years, David. Maybe more years than you've been alive. <laughs> you know, and I, uh, yeah, I know. I know that my youthful appearance belies, you know, my actual age. Yeah. But uh, I've been around for a but long I, time. But I have a feeling, though, if you wanted to, you could probably get by on what you make selling your, your work. Because I know people are after you to write other things, and you're, you're publishing this anthology. What, do you mean, who, what people? What people? What are you talking about? Well, I, I know that, that I know that you. you <laughs> You, uh, <laughs> you know that uh, I'm no showbiz phony. I'm telling the truth. Now you, Come on, man. Now you can't. I don't want to make you look bad. Tell you me you mean to tell me that other people haven't contacted you about writing literary criticism for various publications? Well, I mean, you know, like a you few could make people. a living as a writer. What are you talking? What do you mean? How do you know all that stuff? I can't. <laughs> Man, I've been writing. I've been writing since I was 19 years old, man. I'm now 47. For nationally, you know, you don't believe me. I'm eight years older than you, mm -hmm. man. I don't look it, man. Mm -hmm. You look eight years older than me, man. You look bad. I look bad. You look bad compared to me. Yeah. I look bad compared to yeah, you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the hair piece. Mix, the, yeah, well, okay, now this let's, is mine. No. Not that much, but uh, <laughs> it's all mine. All right. I don't rely on any, you know, prostheses or anything yeah, like I that. Know. That's I a technical know. word. Have you thought about no. a decaffeinated coffee? <laughs> 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 yeah. Next thing you know, it's going to be, you know, like your analysis. No, no, now come on. Now, but I'm serious. What? You, you have the magazine. I can't make a living okay. at it. All right, right, you can't make a living. I can't make a living at it. I can't make a living as a writer. But see, I think maybe, and this is only me conjecturing here, that what you're unwilling to get, to, you don't want to lose the daily activity and the daily contact with ordinary yes, people. Yes, that's right. So it's not so much Would the you money. Find that out? It's not so much What's the money. Somebody briefed you on me. <laughs> it's, it's not so much. Some of your writers, maybe. It's, it's not so much that you, you can't get by without the day job. Right. You just, you like the contact with the I everyday people. I can't get people. by without the day job. Okay. That's the God's truth. Yeah. I can't. What do you want? You know, like when I was writing for Donnelly, I was getting like four bucks for a record with you, okay? okay? A lot of people I write for, I get nothing for. <laughs> I wrote, I finally had a book review in the New York Times. I got two fifty for it, okay? Right. Well, I, I shouldn't have said that. Okay. I'd probably queer myself at the time. Okay, I, you know, like, okay now I let's, like, all right, let's go on to other matters. You, right. You've proven your point, and I'm sorry if I all touched right. the That's source okay. spot. That's okay. No, it's all right, David. Okay. I'm a big man. I can shrug it off. All right, now good. <laughs> um... Now you, uh, the 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 people you work with appear as characters in your in your That's work, right. don't they? Now, do they know that they're in the comic books? Most of them do, yeah. Uh, and how do they feel about that? They love it. Yeah. They like it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they like to be on your show too. They're flattered about they're the. They're flattered, yeah, you know. Yeah. People like publicity. They yeah. think it's a big thing. Uh huh. You know. Uh, and and uh, do all of them that are in the books know they're in the books, or some don't have any idea? A few of them don't. Most of them do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's not really. 
you know, very, very many unflattering portraits that I've done of people. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I do stuff accurately. Uh, a lot of the stuff is pretty serious, actually. Yeah. Uh, some of it's humorous. Um, what I'm trying, you know, I'm focusing on everyday life, right. you know, rather than the highs and lows of people's, uh, you know, like uh, lives. And, uh, sure. Why, why did you select comic books as a forum for that? Why couldn't because, it have been a series of essays or articles or whatever? Because it's a, you know, it just goes along. You know, it's a wonderful medium. It's as good an artistic medium as any other medium. Um, it's, you know, it's words and pictures, and you can do anything you want with words and pictures. Yeah. It doesn't, there's no limit to how good the words can be. Yeah. There's no limit to how good the pictures can be. And, uh, but it's, you know, considered a junk medium because it's been always been aimed at a lowest canon, you know, now common denominator right. audience. Sure. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, very, you know, the potential of it has just, you know, you know, been, uh, hasn't been, hasn't been ex exploited to yeah. any extent. W would you, do you ever one day see yourself writing a screenplay or writing something that might reach a broader audience? Television well, show, do you, have you ever written a t TV script? No, I haven't. Uh, well, I had a play based on, uh, my comic book, uh -huh. so, but, uh, a screenplay or a, you know, theater play is, you know, very similar to, you know, my comic book stuff, you know, or a comic book script, because what it involves is it involves writing dialogue, yeah. and it involves, you know, instructions either to the actors sure. or to the, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, or to the, uh, or to... Relax, relax. All right, don't worry about I it. I know, I'm not worried about it. You don't worry about it. I'm not worried about it either. I just, I want to try. I got a job. I'm trying to, I know you've got a job. I've got a job. We're All both right. very lucky. Okay. We both have jobs. Well, what's the matter? Uh, Look, man. We got it, we got to go. No, no, just for, Harvey, I like you. I'm on your side. All right, man. I, I enjoy the comic books. Okay. And, and here, quickly, tell us about the little doll here. My wife made it. You're okay. And they're, and they're, uh... Am I giving you a hard time? No, you're right? not giving I'm me a hard time. Well, we, no, you're not making me nervous. We have to go now. And I just All wanted right. to mention that these are for sale. Yes. They're made out of your old clothing. That's right. Yeah. And what, what do these go for? Thirty-four bucks. Thirty-four dollars? Thirty-four dollars for this? What are you cheap? You're cheaper no. than me? Well, no, but <laughs> would you pay thirty-four dollars for that? No, but I'm not asking it. My wife is. Oh, know? I see. Well, uh, we'll, excuse me, we'll do a commercial, we'll be back here with Harvey. You're going to stick around. Hey, we're back with uh, Harvey Picar from off the streets of Cleveland. And you mentioned your wife, she was making those dolls, and I imagine yeah. you're probably selling those. Are you, are you an easy man to be married to, do you think? <coughs> yeah, I think so. But the problem is my wives haven't thought so. Either. How many times have you been married, Harvey? Three times. Three times. Yeah. And uh, how long have they lasted? First one about 12 years. 12 the next years? one about three. Yeah. This, this one's, you know, it's like three years and counting, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a good guy. You You're know? a nice guy. Easy going. I think so. You're yeah. cheap, though, aren't you? You're cheap. I'm a little tight. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little tight. Yeah. And uh, uh, you, you eat a lot of junk food, probably. <laughs> yeah, I eat a lot of. Not on this show, though. You guys just got liquid stuff out there. You don't have. Any... So you came here looking for handouts, I didn't you? <laughs> You, you thought, thought maybe we'd laughing, have finger man. sandwiches or crackers you know, and anything, pate. man. You know, Nothing. donuts or anything. <laughs> this is the big time. Listen, man, I, you know, in Cleveland, at least I get donuts. You get donuts like in that. Cleveland. I get, you know, something, man. Well, Brokaw ate all the donuts. I'm sorry. But... Is that right? Now, uh, I thought he only ate fish. On the, uh, on the cover of your, uh, on the cover of your uh, anthology thing, here, it has a little uh, scenario, you on a talk show, and that's, that's you. Right. And you're saying, geez, I never, nine years ago when yeah, I started, right. never imagined being on a talk show. Right. Well, now you're on a talk show. Yeah. What do you think? Well, first of all, that idea came from a guy who worked with Doubleday, the general idea. I wrote the dialogue, but a guy named Mike Barson, you know, who put this thing over with Doubleday, mm -hmm. thought up that idea. Yeah. So what do I think about it? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's a way to, you know, publicize the thing. Look, I, what's the big deal, you know? I don't want to be a celebrity. Yeah, you don't want to be a problems. celebrity. Yeah. Don't you think that there's problems in being a celebrity? There's, there's problems. Do you, like, do you like being a celebrity? There's problems at all levels of you, existence. Man, I, there's some questions I'm in the end ask. Oh, yeah. Do you, no, have I'm you ever even one. seen this show, Harvey? I've seen it twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, shut up, man. <laughs> You're just, you're just playing with them, aren't you? Over, yeah. You're just playing with them. Yeah, yeah it's just, uh, yeah, yeah. No, look. Now, how are things in Cleveland going? <laughs> what do you mean, how are things? 
You're going on the ring. Oh, I've been dumped. Oh, you think that? How, how are things in Indianapolis going? Pretty well. Pretty right. darn well. All right, they're going pretty darn well in Cleveland. <laughs> I was, I'm doing all right, man. You know, I got a job. You got, got a job. Nice, to, I work with nice people. When do you retire? The Indians are. When do you retire? from your job at the hospital. Did somebody ask you to ask me? No, that? I just want to know because I have a feeling you mentioned you're cheap. The fact you're probably I got nine years to go and I get a pension. Yeah, you're squirreling away a lot of money on this book deal, but you're, you're, you you don't want to give up the pension. Isn't that it? I don't want to give up the pension. No, man. Yeah. Well, I worked there 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm stupid? I'm not, I'm not making, you know, maybe last year I made two grand on comics. Yeah. But that see, was the first year I ever broke even on it. But see, Harvey, you're, you're the embodiment of the American dream. Who said that? Who yeah. said that? <laughs> Look, man, admittedly, I should be the embodiment of the American well, dream. Well, I think you I'm are. Not. You're, you're a, a, you so? a, a, a man from the heartland of America. Who, who Which is, is you, yeah. Yeah, but the you. Greatest, who, who's your wit since Herb Schreiner? Herb Schreiner was a terrific man. He was a great man. Yeah. Many, he many, talked uh, different from you. And Twain, he was from a rural area. Well, that's, so what? We no, all talk about it. I'm just making a point. I'm a great admirer of, uh, you know who I like a lot? George Aid. George Aid, yeah. You know him? Yeah, I know George of him, but don't know him. You know, haven't read his stuff? You're sure. Are you from Indiana? Yeah. I'm reading a biography about Theodore Dreiser now that I'm supposed to review. Yeah. I have my How much are you making side. for that? I don't know, I'm at 65 bucks, maybe. <laughs> it's, just, it's the truth, folks. <laughs> All right, Harvey. Um, they told me to come out here and do anything I wanted. I don't care, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's the same thing care. NBC tells me every night. But I feel pretty much the same way you We're do. We're both making a living. That's all right. We're all both doing all right. We're doing all right. All right, now, Harvey, Harvey, let me ask you something. Will you come back and uh, talk with us again sometime, or is this it for you? Yeah, I'll come back if you pay for my plane fare, my hotel room. <laughs> Should I tell them how much I make on this thing? Yeah. No, well, sure. Tell them how much right, you make. I make 100 bucks on this thing. You're making more so than 100 bucks on this What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you want? Harvey's making 100 bucks? How do we get Harvey for 100 bucks? Show oh, because you're pushing the, you're pushing hey, the... Jelly Roll one. Get, come here, man. No, no, that's it. Come here. Oh, it's 100 right. bucks. It's 100 bucks, but you also get a chance to advertise uh, your doll, which well, we'll goes for... We'll see how it moves. We'll see how it moves. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be right back. Okay, my apologies to uh, Drake Sather, young comedian who was to be with us tonight. We ran out of time. Gosh, I wonder why. <laughs> And uh, he'll be back I'm as soon sorry, as we can man. find an opening from him. A very funny young man from Seattle. I'm also, really my sorry. thanks to Tom Broker. That's all right. We'll I'm have really donuts next time you come in. Okay. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Paulina Parts, Coba, John Waters, and Bonnie Raitt. Have a nice night, folks. Thank you very much.